the third video in the bioinformatics and genomics series. So time is open this file in open this file in notepad so I open want to open with so I right clicked scrolled down to open with choose notepad and it opens just like a text file okay this one is nice and easy to read I'm gonna make it a little narrower so there's room for another window next to it it already has carriage returns between the strains so it's easy to see that this is the sequence for one strain two strains and it's also easy to see that these are pseudo obscura strains and if I scroll down to the bottom there I've got my one two three Miranda strains if for some reason the carriage returns weren't there so that it was hard to see those strain names you can just go in and add the carriage return right before that greater than sign before the strain name uh, to make it a little easier to deal with. Okay, next thing I need is the website that we'll use to calculate the McDonald Crickman test for us. And that is at mkt.uab.es. and the page for running the test loads right away. So I want to put all of the sequences for pseudobscura, all the pseudobscura strains, in the box here on the left under species one, and all the Miranda strains over here on the right under species two. So going back to notepad, I select going down, 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 don't have selected, so copy those and paste them there in species one. And then coming back here, okay, so copy them and go back there in species one. And notice down here now it says we've got 11 um, sequences of Pseudo obscura, and that they are 1179 bases long, which is the same number we had in mega. That's good. If I click somewhere else here on the screen, there it loads that same information for Miranda. Okay, which test do we want to run? Yes, for the first standard McDonald Kreitman test, we want to compare synonymous changes to non synonymous changes, so those two boxes need to be checked, and they are. And then we want to say synonymous changes are neutral, so we want that box next to synonymous changes checked, and that is as well. But before we can run it, we need to go to main parameters. We already aligned the sequences, so we don't want that to happen. We want them to leave the alignment alone, so uncheck the box next to align sequence. And click on the run test button. And it thinks for a little bit. It says that it's running. and another screen but then here's our results so that didn't take too long uh, and there's some information that if you haven't already you need to record up here at the top just so um, we know what was compared so if you didn't write it down when you had mega open here's the number of pseudo obscura sequences and the number of Miranda sequences the length of the alignment which you also had in Mega but you might not have written down yet. If you haven't yet, do it now, last chance. And this is one that you haven't had yet. So this is the percent of nucleotides that it skipped because they were ends or deletions. And so total what was skipped was 20.2% of the of the whole length of the sequence so gotta write that down now this is these numbers look weird they they're not whole numbers which doesn't make sense it's because it's been 
the divergence has been corrected. We don't want to worry about that correction, so click this radial button right here that's next to without any corrections for divergence, and then you get nice whole numbers. Here in the contingency table, and this is just what you saw in lecture, so uh, the only thing that's different, polymorphism is the same. We called divergence uh, fixed differences, but it's the same thing. This just says neutral and non-neutral because you can assign different uh, parameters to be neutral and non-neutral, but we said synony synonymous changes were neutral, so that's what this is. And we said non-synonymous changes are not neutral, so that's what's down here. So in this case, there are 23 synonymous polymorphisms within uh, each species. There is one non-neutral polymorphism. There are five neutral fixed differences between the two species and no uh, non-synonymous differences between the two species. So those four numbers you'll need to record. Um, then this, in this case, it's null because you're dividing by zero because the NI, the neutrality index, is non-neutral polymorphisms divided by neutral polymorphisms, so 1 over 23, then that's going to be divided by non-neutral divergence or fixed differences divided by the neutral ones, which is 0 over 5, which is 0. So you're dividing 1 23rd by 0. Since you can't divide by 0, it says it's null. But it can still compare 0 over 5 to 1 out of 23 and see whether that's um, whether those uh, do a chi-squared test to see if that's within the range of expectation or not. And so you get your chi-squared value, which is 0.215, which gives you a p-value of 0.642. So very, very much not significant. There's no evidence at all that this uh, is anything different than what we'd expect under neutrality, so no evidence at all that any forces besides um, genetic drift and mutation are happening here in this particular gene. Now, that was, that was our first standard McDonald-Kreitman test. We also want to run a modified McDonald-Kreitman test. I'm going to do that in a new window, but and it remembers the website, so I'll go straight there, but you could use the same window by going back to main here over on the left. So again, I still have, well, no, I don't. Okay, so I'm down here by Miranda, so I'm gonna copy the three Miranda sequences first. Go over there, paste them in species two, then here at the bottom of this last pseudo obscure G, uh, strain. Select all of those, copy, paste to species one, so that's all exactly the same. But this time we don't want to analyze all the synonymous changes. We want to limit the synon our definition of synonymous changes just to those that are full for fourfold degenerate. So codons where the third position of the codon can be any nucleostide and it will still code for the same amino acid. So no matter what mutation happens at that third position, uh, the amino acid won't change. And we want to say that that's neutral. So the boxes that are checked now are analyze non-synonymous changes and then analyze four, fourfold degenerate changes, sites slash changes with a check mark over there to set that as neutral. And we still need to go over to parameters and say don't align the sequences. I already aligned them and I'm happy with it. And then run the test. That was more like the speed it usually takes. So again, that's the same information, but you should have already written that down so you don't need it. Again, make sure you click without any correction so you have nice whole numbers. And um, so we 
We didn't lose any non-neutral ones, of course, because that hasn't changed. We've just changed our definition of synonymous to be more limiting, so we have fewer um, four, fourfold degeneracies than we had otherwise all-encompassing synonymous mutations and same in fixed differences. And our, our NI is still null since we're still dividing by zero. But we still have a chi-squared and a p-value, but they're actually, at least the p-value is still very, very similar. This didn't change much. We still have no evidence that anything besides genetic drift and mutation is acting on this on this gene or its product. And that's the completion of running the McDonald Kreitman test. Uh, so the and you do all three of these steps for your five genes and then you pick two of them to uh, look up the function of the genes product as I showed you in the flybase video uh, and relate the function to your McDonald-Kreitman results. Good luck with the lab.